Hey everybody, welcome to the channel, True Crime Stories. If you're new to the channel, please hit that like button and subscribe so you can hear more. Thanks for stopping by. This is from May 30th, 2024. Investigation continues in April disappearance of a man with Elkton ties. Now this is in Delaware. It's been nearly nine months since Charles Robert Bobby Steele vanished, but investigators are still working hard to find out what happened to the missing man. Investigators are still very active, said the Elkton Police Department. Steele was last seen in Claymont, Delaware at around 6 p.m. on April the 11th. He was seen on security camera footage. His relatives contacted authorities. On May the 3rd, a few weeks later, his relatives reported his disappearance to the Elkton Police Department. A missing persons notification went onto the agency's Facebook page that same day and they started their investigation. But then as I started to um, investigate a little bit into him and look for more information, it turned out that he was found deceased. And I'm going to read a couple of links on here and see what they say about it. I know the last one that I read said there was a person of interest. Last April, the Elkton Police Department issued an alert for Charles Robert Bobby Steele, who was reported missing days after leaving a family member's home on foot. On Tuesday, this was um, this year, 2024, the agency announced that it was with a heavy heart and sadness that they had located the man deceased. He was reportedly he was reportedly found in a vacant building in Delaware. No details of his death have been released. He he grew national attention and was the subject of a missing persons podcast detailing the circumstances surrounding his disappearance. His sister Kelly took to TikTok and social media to help spread the word about him to try to locate him. He seemed, Bobby seemed relieved when Kelly picked him up and brought him to her home. And things were looking up for him, she said, but then he vanished and was never seen again. A man who was last seen in Claymont was found dead inside a Wilmington building. This is dated March 21st, 2024. The search for Robert Charles Bobby Steele concluded tragically when his remains were discovered in a vacant building. The building was scheduled for demolition. Last month, according to his sister Kelly, Bobby, who had been missing since April 11, 2023, was discovered inside a wall of a vacant building. Bobby had departed from the residence he shared with his sister, intending to meet an acquaintance on Market Street in Wilmington. This was the same day he had been notified of his approval for a housing voucher through HUD, a milestone he had been working towards for a year. Two hours after leaving his home, he made a phone call to his sister, which would be the last communication that they had. She didn't hear from him for two weeks. She attempted to report him missing to the Newcastle County Police Department, but faced resistance. She turned to the Elkton Police Department due to Bobby previously living in Elkton. The department, had, the department then filed a missing persons report and entered his details into the missing persons national database. The investigation... Kelly says there were challenges, including bureaucratic obstacles and a lot and a lack of interagency cooperation.
This went on for several months, she said. In early March, a breakthrough came when the Elkton Police Department told Kelly that skeletal remains matching the description of her brother and his clothing had been found and were taken to the medical examiner's office in Wilmington. Demolition crews discovered the body in February. They used Kelly, uh, they used DNA to um, identify him. The Wilmington Police Department spokesperson confirmed that the investigation into Steele's death is ongoing. The preliminary findings have not indicated foul play. However, Kelly believes that there is. She believed that her brother's disappearance was not simply a case of him wandering off. Now, apparently he'd had some issues, and I don't know what his background was as far as mental illness or any kind of criminal case against him or anything, but she had said that he was very happy when she picked him up and brought him to her house. So it sounds like maybe he had been on the streets for a while, or something was going on. And so she had let him come and stay with her. And she believes that he did not vanish purposely. He didn't just go off and decide to climb into this building and hide or, or sleep there because he had a place to stay. And anybody who, you know, had a bed to sleep in. Now, keep in mind Someone, if he did suffer from mental illness or anything like that, he might not have. He might not have been able to rationally decide to go back. This is dated February the 23rd of 2024. Investigators have located a woman they consider to be a person of interest in a case involving a man who went missing. The Elkton Police Department detectives, lead investigators, confirmed Thursday that officers found 41-year-old Leah Suzanne Vary and identified, interviewed her. Because of an ongoing investigation, he was not at liberty to give more details. Investigators are trying to find 44-year-old Charles Bobby Steele. Now, this was before he was found and identified. Miss Vary possibly has information related to his whereabouts, and we would like to speak to her, says the Elkton Police Department investigators. Relatives of Steele contacted authorities after he was last seen in Claymont based on security camera footage. Some three weeks later, his relatives reported him missing. Now, I've already told all this. I don't know what this, who this woman was and what her connection to him might have been. And I don't know if, since his body was found, if they believe it was foul. They say they don't believe it was foul play. His sister doesn't really believe that. She, she thinks that... Um, there, there was more to this. And who this woman was and why she was a person of interest, was she someone that he had a previous relationship with? Was this someone he had a re, uh, that had a relationship with someone who he had trouble with? This is from Missing True Crime, Missing Murdered and Unsolved. Oklahoma. Clinton Robert Thomas went missing from Dustin, Oklahoma at 4.30 p.m. on August the 4th, 2018. He was last seen at his residence. He was 70 years old at the time of his disappearance. The gate to his property was not locked and one of his pickup trucks was found about 10 miles away with his keys and medicine inside. According to his children, he would never leave his gate unlocked. He would never leave his truck unlocked. He would not have left his medicine and keys out in the open. Clinton is described as a white and native American male. He is about five foot six and weighs about 180 pounds. He has gray or partially gray hair, 
a very long white beard, a long, a long gray beard, blue eyes, and he wears glasses. He has scars on his back and legs and a tattoo on his right arm that says Wanda. Clinton's personal belongings, including a cell phone, a wallet with his driver's license, and numerous business cards were found inside of his truck. I was looking to see if there had been any updates about him. This is dated 20 or 2019. This was about six months after he disappeared. I'm going to see what it says. Months after a Hughes County man vanished, his family is frustrated with the investigation. More than six months after he, he disappeared, Clinton Thomas's daughter is desperate for answers. She says she isn't getting any help from the sheriff's office. Thomas disappeared in August of 2018. He was 71. The gate to his property was left open, and Dad never leaves his gate open, said his daughter Mary. Thomas's truck was found abandoned about 10 miles away. She says that she is sure something happened to her father, but she says that the theory of the investigators are not taking that the investigators are not taking her serious. They kept trying to tell us, well, he just lost his mind, or maybe he had a stroke and he's not sure who he is or what he's doing, said Murray. She's frustrated with the investigators and says that they are not doing anything to help her. She's also concerned that his phone records haven't been pulled. She wonders why they haven't pulled his phone records to see where he might have gone. But what's really gotten her upset is that there's a lack of communication. They're only a phone call away, she says, and we would appreciate it, but they never tell us anything, and they never call us back. News 4 reached out to the Hughes County Sheriff, Marsha Maxwell. She said they have explored every possibility, but haven't found any evidence of foul play. So I guess her idea of foul play would be bullet casings on the ground, blood, blood, maybe blood might have been found in the vehicle, um, a broken window at his home, something to indicate that there could have been a reason that someone else was involved. And what if the man did lose his mind or have a stroke? Would he have been wandering around the highway or out into the woods? Did they or organize any kind of search for him just in case he did lose his mind? We have combed his residence, she said, and we've come up with nothing. We even walked the area with cadaver dogs. Okay. So if there was no signs of foul play, according to the sheriff, why bring out cadaver dogs? Cadaver dogs are trying to search for the smell of death. They are trying to search for a, a cadaver. They're not uh, search dogs that are, are trying to search for a living person. Well, we thought if he might have broke down, he might have tried to walk home, she said. So the cadaver dogs started with the deputies and went all around, and they walked all around his house. So they've turned up nothing, she says. The son, he calls every day, and we don't have anything to go on. We don't have anything we can tell him. We have followed up on all leads, she says. We hope that he is still alive, but deep down, we know that he's probably not, said his daughter. We would like to give closure and be able to bury our dad. There's nothing newer that I could find, newer than um, 2019. But I will keep looking. I always when I when I come to the end and get ready to wrap up a story, I always feel like that I'm 
that maybe there's something I'm overlooking. Maybe there's something that just that I'm going to find out that the case has been solved and nobody told me, you know, I couldn't find it. This is another case that had very few details, but I did want to talk about some of these cases. Um, this man's name was John Monroe, but he went by the name Curry, K-E-R-R-Y. John Monroe was a 53-year-old farmer and enjoyed trapping, hunting, and fishing. His family described him as a hard worker who loved his children. There are not very many details available about his murder. At some point, this took place in December, right before Christmas of 2019. At some point, John went to his girlfriend's home located on South Lawn Drive while there, an unknown person knocked on the door at 7.30 at night, and when John answered, he was shot multiple times, point-blank range. He died from the gunshot wounds. The assassin or the assailant has never been identified, and no suspect has ever been publicly named. There's been very little media coverage about his case. And it just says, if you have any information, please contact the Kentucky State Police. He was a white male, um, age 54 at the time of the incident. There is one more story about him that I found on the Kentucky State Police website. But it doesn't give very many more details. This took place in Shelbyville, Kentucky. It just says here that Kentucky State Troopers responded to a 911 call on South Lawn Drive in Shelbyville. When they arrived, they found John Monroe shot to death inside the doorway of the home. He had been shot multiple times. I don't know who else was at the house that night that gave this information. It just said that he was at his girlfriend's home. Um, I don't know if he was having trouble with somebody, if she was having trouble with somebody. This sounds almost to me like a case of maybe a jealous ex. Or I'm just looking through here to see if I see anything else that may offer more to the story. But even on the state police website, they just said there was very little for them to go on. And so that was all there was on that man's case. So he was at the home and the girlfriend was at the home. Someone comes to the door. He gets up and goes to open the door. Maybe, maybe the killer intended to come into the home. Maybe he intended to kill both people. I don't know, but for whatever whatever happened here, the man was murdered, and they still have no suspects. That's really all I could find on those cases, but I'm going to continue to look through some different websites, and if their names come up or if any more information on their cases come up, I will come back and do a recap or a follow-up. I appreciate everyone who took the time to watch my videos, I, but I do appreciate all my uh, subscribers. I appreciate everyone who watches, and um, thanks for watching.